Hey What's guys. up, y'all? It's your girl Isis, the doll of the ghost, with your boy. It's the Cajun boy. Check out the shirt, unanimous jury. We're gonna be talking about some political stuff today, so y'all. You guys, it's so important. We, I know we've been talking about this, and it's really important that people get out there and voice your, make your voices heard. So yesterday, um, Billy, it was brought to my attention. So I asked the question, why do you feel that you know this election is the most important? So um, let's kind of just chime in on that, and then also we'll just kind of go into why do we feel like millennials um, don't think that, you know, the right to vote is, like, as important as them, you know, keeping up with Baller Alert or the Shade Room. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's weird. Okay, I kind of want to touch on that first. Okay. So it's like millennials. I was, um, I was listening to the speech that Oprah was doing. It was about Sidney Poitier and some, a couple other people that uh, Al Sharpton, that their parents had a direct um, a direct relation to not being able to vote. Like their parents weren't able to vote. And I think millennials are removed from that. So it's like they don't understand how important it is to vote because they didn't, they, they didn't see the opportunity that people didn't have to vote. And I also think like they don't think their vote counts because they know the process. They know that their vote isn't like, you know, it's not going directly to that person. It's not a popular vote, like an electoral college in Lexington people. So a lot of millennials are informed of that. And it kind of, you know, it would scare me away if I felt like my vote is actually not going to count, but somebody else is actually going to, you know, send me that vote. But, you know, it's so important to educate and exercise that right. I mean, that is our right. Like, that right was not given to us. We have not always been able to vote. And it's like, if you want change, you know, a lot of people, especially millennials, we're complaining about, you know, violence or our neighborhoods or bringing our kids up and having a safe environment but who is in your area who's running your community like you have to get out there we complaining but we're not making the change yeah. we're not doing anything and is it really just the millennials or do we have it's, like I older really, people actually, too that's shy of it? in my opinion i think it's it's that gap between baby boomers so people who are like 60 plus and millennials i think it's the people in the middle who yeah. aren't voting like i think millennials are like oh let me go vote just to get the picture but then the older people know the importance of you know actually going to vote right i mean one of the biggest things that's actually on the ballot which i know Shreveport is not giving much attention to is the congressional race you have ryan trundle versus mike johnson i mean that's a that's an election that's going to affect uh affect us at a federal level like he wants to do some things like that's gonna change us how change how the state of Louisiana actually works, right. and like he wants to raise the minimum wage. Like, why are, why are there no people out there holding out Ryan Trundle signs? Like, right. people making minimum wage in like this city, and that's like he wants to increase that. Like, yeah, that's and I money. saw on our um, uh, on our page there was something that showed like the statewide, like United States, everybody's like minimum wage or what is it? Yeah, you know, supposedly yeah. to be comfortable, and I'm just like, well, yeah, Louisiana on. was thirteen seventy nine. I mean, that's there's there's nowhere in like this city that you're gonna make that that's a, like an hourly no. minimum wage job there's no way you're gonna be able to do that which is gonna make you rely on having multiple jobs which is gonna make you have less time for children right. which is gonna affect their education it's a snowball effect that's why yeah. it's important to increase the minimum wage to at least you know the living wage it doesn't have to be right. a lot but you should be able to live you on it. You should be able to live on it and live comfortably and be able to at least take care of a, you know, single home family or something. But I mean, I, it's here. it's also something along the lines of, in my opinion, you shouldn't be 35. This sounds so bad. You should be 35 make, making a, or working at a minimum wage job. It's That's like it. you have experiences at that point in your life that you should be in management or you should go into the management, the management training. Like, 35 year old kids should not be working like an hourly minimum wage job at McDonald's. It's like, I know people have setbacks in life and they go through things, but you have experiences you can build upon, you know, two years being that you being a manager. Right. Like, that but should be that also long -term. goes into where people go and set the bar on society, whereas people say, oh, well, by this age, I have to do this, and by this age, I have to do that. So I don't really, you know, I kind of feel you, but at the same time, it's kind of like, you can't really say where they are in their life just because of their age. Yeah. I just, so I just, that can kind of go either way. Yeah, and yeah, I understand, but it's just like... Because a lot of people are like, oh, well, if you're 30, you should be married, or oh, you should be this by this point. You that's my this. <laughs> that's <laughs> my age, 30. I want to be married, so uh, <laughs> this finger needs to have a ring on it by 30. <laughs> but yeah, that's... that's I mean, voting is important. Even if, even if you have one candidate or one amendment in mind that you want to vote for, 
you need to vote for this. Go, go vote what people tell you. Vote because you see this sign. But people have died for your right to vote. People yes. have stood out in the cold. People have been killed. Like, that's that's something you need to exercise even if you're okay. you're not sure even if you think it won't matter because in actuality it does. it does this country's about to have a blue wave of greatness and we're about to make a lot of change in the country yeah which goes back to you know my other question like i said why do you feel that this election is so important like everybody's like we've been voting for a while now for years but yeah. this election everybody's like this election is like extremely important why is this election so important I feel like, I mean, it's in our faces. Like, yeah. you can see how important it is now. I mean, going all the way up to the head, over, you know, the local, <laughs> like, the yeah. head, the president. Like, you guys, like, yeah. we need to get out here and get to and the people, done. And people actually, they say, oh, it's not a presidential election. It actually is because the people that we elect can decide whether or not this president stays in office. It is a presidential election. That's why Donald Trump is in these Republican states campaigning for these people because he know if there's a blue wave coming that he won't be there for long. Yes. Like that that's the importance of an election. I mean people all over the country are talking about legalize. You realize that when you ally yourself with a congressman or a, well, a congressman that wants legalization, you just check and see if that congressman wants that, and then that person's gonna act on uh, act on your opinion and vote for legalization. It's small things like that that you have to realize. Oh, I'm voting for that too. Right. Or if right. you want new stuff in your city, let's bring it back local. I'm voting for that too. You want better right. jobs. You want better hospitals. You're voting for all of that stuff. Right. Right. Yeah. yeah. Totally agree. But that's, my, but that's why it's so important that people rant. get out there and educate themselves. I was talking to a young lady yesterday, and I was like, you know, hey, have you voted yet? And she's like, no. She's like, I don't know nothing about this stuff. And then, like, later on in the day, like, she's telling me about, you know, I don't know, something that's on Baller Alert or the Shade Room. And I'm just like, but we'll go in. We'll find all the information for Cardi B and Nicki Minaj. Yeah. B, <laughs> but we won't take the time to educate ourselves on something as important as going out there and voting it changes our area like our world around us i kind of wish politics or politicians sometimes were like dumb dumb it all down like yeah. they hold up a sign that says i want to fix the roads so you know when you're voting for the right. person and you want the roads fixed oh like i should be with that person but you know sometimes they make it like uh my and it's important that we increase the infrastructure we make the infrastructure better in street court a lot of people don't know what infrastructure means so you just got to break it down right. for people who can vote, but they not be, they may not have a, a reading level to right. allow them to understand what's going on. I mean, even if they do under, even if they don't understand, there's resources out there. I I didn't understand it at first, but you know what? When Billy sat down on our last episode, if you watched it, he literally broke down every amendment for you. Yes. So I was able then to go back and tell people, hey, go watch this video. Like, oh, girl, you didn't know. Oh, well, you can go on this, and he breaks each one of them down. Like, there's resources, and I've seen posts on Facebook that actually breaks it down to as he says dumbs it down for you for you to understand so if you really want to know and you really want to be a part of you really want to educate yourself it's out there like it's not like it's hidden it's something you got to like search search for it's there it's all over social media right now yeah. one of the important things actually on the uh the ballot is a unanimous jury which basically says like you would want this is how i'm going to break it down you'd want 12 people to convict one of your relatives, one of your friends, one of your family members, one of your teachers, one of your 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 kids' best friends, you would want a, a jury of 12 people to say yes, a unanimous jury to convict that person in life over a jury of 12, but only 10 only saying, 10 saying yeah. guilty. I mean, that's yeah. crazy. I would want as many as people as I would want a jury like, of out, 100 all the way unanimous across, jury. Like you 100% yeah. have convicted me. Not there have been cool. so many people who have been free in the last couple of years due to like new evidence or due DNA technology and those people I mean it takes one person to have a doubt in order to say that person doesn't do life in prison and that's crazy that these people's lives were ruined and that they don't have the opportunity to be the next person that creates a cure to cancer or the next person that says oh if we go to the moon then tomorrow's we can make it back like you rob that person of all of those opportunities I'd be going on rant about no, political stuff now. That's good. They need the people need yeah. to hear it because 
we are, you know, a younger generation, you know, so people are actually looking to see how we feel about this. Yeah. So that, that's good. Like, you need to give them all the good. <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't get on the side. But uh, we were talking before. I'm actually new to a whole social go team. Well, not new. I haven't been here since they did locker rooms. So tell me about locker rooms. I'm actually looking forward to being on this. If I can be unfiltered and y'all, locker room mother approved. is awesome. Uh, it is my favorite. When I initially started with social goes, I I haven't been with social goes since they first started. But I was here when locker room started, and I love locker room. Locker room, we all just kind of get together and we just talk about just open conversation. There's no filter, there's no nothing. Like it's raw, it's uncut. It's just raw, uncut. Raw, it's uncut. <laughs> <laughs> locker that's room what, talk. That's what I love about it because it, like we literally freely talk about whatever is going on or whatever you feel or how you feel about something. Um, and it gets a lot of feedback, it gets a lot of people asking questions or people comments. I mean, it is awesome, and I cannot wait yeah. for that. To I'm, start. I'm excited about that. I want to think of some good stuff just to be like, racism, boom, let's put it on yes, abortion, like, boom, put yes, it on Yes, that's what we talked about. I mean, we talked about, um, we talked about domestic violence, and we talked about child support. I mean, we have just went in, and it has definitely stirred the pot, got our viewers, you know, engaging with us, because we go live on Facebook when we do locker room talk, and it really grabs attention from left and People really excited. get to that. So I'm it's excited. Cool. It's going to be unfiltered. Ooh. <laughs> yes. I may have to have one of those little blurry things over my face if it's just me talking. Because <laughs> if I get unfiltered, it's going to be unfiltered. Like, you're going to, it's going to be pretty, it's going to be pretty dope. Um, let's see. Well, we're also right now, we're sitting in front of Bun Temps. They have the Women Empowerment, um, the re-up tour going on right now. Um, so you'll see some footage of that. Myself, uh, Danny with the I, Not and Y, and Desiree were all um, actually interviewing with Robin, the lady who has put this together. So you'll see some footage of that uh, here soon as well. Um, also today, um, Fast Talk is being released at 5 o'clock today. So be sure that everybody gets to tune in to that. And if you didn't get to tune in, go ahead and check it out on the YouTube channel because it will be there as well. Um, they'll be cool. Uh, interviewing Miss Kathy. Um, I can't remember Miss Kathy. Ms. She's Kathy. getting an interview from the two most, or two one of, the, two of the most fashionable ladies. I don't know why I can't talk today. Two of the most <laughs> fashionable ladies in Shreveport. That's Danny with an I and Tasha. Yes, Tasha Von Ray Designs. I'm sure you guys uh, have heard of her. She is well known in the community. And she travels and does a lot of different things. She's awesome. She so, y'all, I had this idea last night. I don't know why I didn't bring this up to you. I want to go grocery shopping. We're going to go grocery shopping online. And I want y'all's opinion on certain stuff to buy. I'm going to make something to eat that night. We're going to cook it. We're going to go live. And we're going to have a good time. We're going to do that. And we're also going to go thrifting. So, we're going to go to, like, Uptown, Goodwill. We're going to go to thrift shops and put together a couple of outfits. I'm going to put together an outfit, like, that I would work in. Uh, some cool stuff a weekend outfit we're gonna go all over town yeah there's a lot of good stuff in thrift stores um i for one i am a thrift shopper i had i used to get like all my work clothes from there like yeah it's amazing and there's a few um there's a few stores in bolger that i think a lot of people like uh was it plato's closet some uh, i love uptown i sell uptown, there i yes. buy there it's like Mikasa Zukasa. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's, it's a good place. Yeah, so grocery shopping, that's coming. You're going to get to go grocery shopping with the goats. Yes, uh, like I'll show y'all what I like to buy. Stuff I always stock in my fridge, like my cheese and my hummus, my salt and vinegar chips, which I just started I'm liking. I'm getting hungry. Are you guys? Okay. <laughs> I just started liking recently. That's going to be something fun that we got coming up. Mentioning something that might be coming. Oh, yeah. So there will be a trivia night at Bonds coming in December. It's actually going to be the first Tuesday, December 4th at Bonds. So get ready for that. We're going to have drink specials every round. So every round we do, there's going to be a new drink special for you guys to enjoy. Uh, probably going to be some gift cards to Bonds. I'm going to try to get some gift cards to some of the other restaurants here in the Red River District. Uh, it's going to be dopeness. And it won't be like this boring trivia. It's going to be trivia that concerns the culture. It's going to be trivia that concerns civics. Culture. I'm going to make sure it's a fun and good time. I always like to, I go to trivia nights and I always just like 
when was the first Reese's eaten? I'm just like, that's boring. Or what was the name of, of the Milton Bradley's horse? It was like Snickers, but it's like, these are dumb questions. I want to have questions like, what was the name of the first Spike Lee movie? Uh, who's the first man to wear a pair of Jordans on the, <laughs> who's the first person to wear a pair of Jordans on the basketball court? Like, it's going to be fun trivia. We probably have some coffee related stuff, some street court related stuff. Uh, and this is going to be on like a Tuesday night, right? Tuesday night. And there's nothing out here going on on a Tuesday night, so why not come out and have a good time? And it's drink specials every hour. Tuesday night drink specials. I'm not saying you should be like tipsy on a Tuesday, but you should be tipsy on a Tuesday. On a Tuesday. <laughs> it's, it will be Christmas time. And I'll, I'll be here having drinks on Tuesday. I yeah. probably will not know any of the trivia questions. So even if you don't know it, it's totally okay to come down and have a good time. Yeah, and it, if you feel like it's made up, you guys may need to check my uh, blood alcohol level at that time because it may be made up, but we will have trivia. It'll be fun. Uh, cereal bar Saturdays at Bones. Come check that out. She has promised that, Desiree has promised that she'll so be So tell me a little bit about that because you went to that this past Saturday, correct? I came, but I was early because, you know, I'm trying to be a socialite at Treeport or whatever. But uh, she has cereal bar, and she has cereal, all of the famous cereals, and these are name brand. These aren't like, you know, crispy flakes. They're actually, you know. So like, like Pops are there? Rice Pops, Krispies? Cocoa Puffs. Uh, she don't have Cocoa Krispies, but Cocoa Puffs are just as good. Uh, all of this, I want to say it's mostly every other Saturday. There's always something to do at Bones on Saturdays and like Thursday nights. You got Thursday night vibes. Uh, definitely come check it out. Cool, cool. And that is actually one um owned by one of the social goats so we definitely support on Tim's and everything that they have on uh, Miss Desiree herself is one of the owners